So we're going to be using this stamp set here. So I thought we'll go for the summer days. And I thought what we'll do is, is if you're just maybe not comfortable with colouring, we'll go straight in with some colours and show you how you can mix and match colour with your actual finesse black ink pad. So we've got this lovely actual let design right down at the bottom here with the fairy. As we can see, you've got these multiple ones on this one as well. So let's go straight in. I'm going to take my stamping mat and my stamping platform. I've got some of our watercolour card that we can see just here. All that I'm going to do is if I just move that one to the side, pull the stamp off. I'm just going to pop it right into the centre of our stamping platform. And we're just going to pop that in. There we go. So I've taken three of our Harmony Water uh, Reactive ink pads. So I have taken our Parakeet, our Fuchsia and our Lemon Tonic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly stamp a few different areas. So I'm going to go for the lighter one first on the yellow. So let's just stamp that in a few different places. Then what I'm going to do is we're going to go into the Fuchsia and we can stamp that one along the bottom just there, just randomly, nothing specific. And then we're going to go into the Parakeet and we're just going to stamp that towards the middle. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just taking one of our Spectrum Noir uh, Water Reactive Spritz Bottles and then I'm just going to bring in my cardstock just here and I'm just going to give that a good spritz with water, good coverage and also over the stamp, give that a good spritz as well. Then what we're going to do is just lie over the top and we're just going to press. Now by using the water and the water active card, what we're going to do is we're going to get this sort of bleed effect. So we can see, you're starting to see the outline of the image but it's starting to bleed out. So taking your heat tool, and then all that we're just going to do is just start to dry this off. So we're going to get the majority of that ink dried off as well as the water and see how it starts to bleed and push and pull. Don't worry about that. Let that go just naturally. It all adds to the effect. So we're just going to carry on. We're just going to just dry off all these different parts onto your cardstock. When it's nearly dry, what you can then do is just take a bit of kitchen roll, anything like that, and just dab that wee bit of the excess off. Just dabbing that off so we've got this ni nice dry area. Finish that off, just give that a good dab. So we can see you're starting to still see the outline of the stamp, but the colours just bled out all the way around. So if I move that to the side, then let's just wipe away some of this excess. Now you can be re-stamping with what's on there, do a second and third generation stamp. But for uh, time and speed, we're just going to take all that excess off for the time being. Then what we're going to do when I know that's dry, we can then just take our finesse. This is our uh, waterproof dye ink pad, and this is the Noir Black that I'm using. So now what I'm just going to do is go straight over the top, that full image. And even as I'm stamping, you can already start to see that fine detail of this gorgeous fairy sitting on the toadstool. So just finish that off, give that a good tap and a coverage. Bringing this back in now. Then what I'm going to do, now don't be worried, don't be neat or precise, just kind of where you think, as close as you can, go to where you stamped originally, and then we're just going to stamp that in place. So that's now going to give us that fine black outline detail. So then if I remove that out of the way, then you can see now, if I bring that in for you to see, we've got that fine detail, that gorgeous detailed line all the way around of the stamped image, but we've got that very rustic colour effect background. So that adds some colour. If maybe you're not too comfortable when it comes to your colour and shading, but you want that vibrancy when it comes to the colour, then that's a good way of doing it as well. And you know you don't need to be neat, you don't need to be precise, but you're still going to get this really lovely effect. 